Well, hello there folks and welcome back to The Whiskey Friend with me, Alan. Here we are again, another new week, another new video. Yes, another brand new video. In today's video, it's going to be a wee, a wee bit different. I'm tackling a list. I see I haven't produced a list for a wee while. Uh, I'm looking forward to doing this one with you. I'm going to do my favourite cast strength whiskies that's currently on my bar at the minute. So these are purely all cast strength whiskies. They're... There's going to be some whiskies that cast strength whiskies out there that are not on this list. If you feel there's something that should be on the list that I should tackle and put it on my bar, dive into the comments and let us know. But this is purely the with the cast strength whiskies that are on the whiskey friend bar in 2022. Just before I get into them, guys, just to let you know, there's a, there's something in here for everyone. They're not all going to be about sherry. You know I'm a sherry head, but there's a mix in here. There's there's sherry, there's bourbon, there's peat, there's smoke. There's all sorts, there's Highland, there's Isla, there's Campbelltown, there's whiskies from all over, so let's get into them. The first one on the list, yes, I'm starting with Sherry. I'm starting with Glen Goyne, so I've got the Glen Goyne Teapot Dram, batch. 008, batch 8, £130, yes it's a lot but it's an awesome whiskey, 59% ABV, it is the unhurried since 1833 and it's from Scotland's slowest stills, this one is fantastic guys, it's powerful, it's intense, it's thick, it's creamy, it's jammy, it's sticky, it's dried fruit, dark fruit, red fruit, uh, it's it's a big big fruit compro on the nose it's very very sticky and jammy on the nose and the palate it starts off jammy becomes really dry and then it, the mouth watering just comes from nowhere some berry fruit red fruit apples dark chocolate it's very very spicy it's probably the spiciest teapot dram that I've done to date but it's so rich it's so sweet and it's so fruity so that's the first one on the list the teapot dram as you can see I'm, I'm on a bottle kill of this one but I have no fears folks I have I have picked up a backup they are they were I was at the distillery a couple of weeks ago and they were still available at the distillery so I think if you contact Glen Goyne you might be able to pick one up so that's the first one Glen Goyne teapot so the next one on the list guys we're heading across to the Isle of Arran I did see we were going to travel around in this little video so we're heading over to the Isle of Arran, which I'm going to do the Arran Sherry Cask, the, the Bodega. It's from a Sherry Hogshead, 55.8% ABV, non-chill filtered natural colour. All that beautiful stuff from Arran. So, if I remember right with this one, I paid £55 for it. You probably see I've got another one over my shoulder here, which is, is getting pretty much battered through at the minute. So... Won't be too long before I get into this one. It's that rich, lovely, dark colour as usual. Uh, that sherry there again, another sherry bomb. This one's rich, it's complex, it's luxurious whiskey, it's velvety whiskey, it's lots of dark chocolate, lots of dark fruit, lots of apples, lots of raisins, figs, sultanas. If I remember right, it had a beautiful ginger note from this, lots of ginger spice, uh, lots of it in there. But it's all that dark fruit, beautiful, beautiful mouthfeel, just a really, really luxurious whiskey. If you get it anywhere around about that 50 55 pounds in, then it's a steal and it must be on your shelf. It's that high ABV at 55.8% ABV, takes water well, but yeah, fantastic stuff. Wonderful stuff from Aaron. Let's move on. Okay, folks, for the next one, I'm going to stay on Aaron. I'm not going too far. I've got another Aaron to bring you away, another cast strength Aaron. This is the James McTaggart Master of Distilling 2. This is a 12 year old Aaron. Licensed to distill the man with a golden glass. It's a fantastic special edition, limited edition. 12,000 bottles. It's finished in Palo Catado sherry casks from Jerez. And it's again, it's cast strength at 51.8. So the cast strength has dropped back a little bit with this one. But it's still, it's still a hot one. Uh, so what I remember from this, I've been smashing through it. I got gifted a sample a few years ago and I've not looked back since. I've been starting to build these up, so I've got a couple in the old stash. So what I remember for this one is it's spicy, it's tropical fruit, it's creamy, it's buttery, 
It's raisin, sultana, dark fruit, dried fruit. It's lemon citrus, and that lemon citrus becomes a wee bit more kind of lemon custard on the nose. It's creamy, it's complex. It also has that earthy outdoor notes on it on the nose. But as you get into the palate, it's a dry, spicy arrival, hot arrival, creamy, velvety, buttery, thick. It's spicy. It's a nice spicy, another spicy whiskey. That lemon citrus that was on the nose is becoming orange on the palate. The tropicals there, the pineapple, the mango, the dried fruits there. There's a little bit of raisin, sultana, but there's also a wonderful toffee and honey and vanilla sweetness coming through this as well. And it's a little bit oaky heading into the finish. So if you ever get a chance to pick up one of these RN12 James Wick Taggarts, guys, dive all in, fill your boots. Whiskey friend recommendation. Let's move on. Okay folks, I think this is the last of the sherry ones, so I thought I'd get all the sherry out of the way Then we'll move on to the bourbon and the peat and all that stuff later on So this is the last of the sherry ones I think so far Wouldn't be a sherry cast strength without a Glenallachy 10 Cast strength, this is batch 6 this one 57.8% ABV Full of flavour Non-chill filtered natural colour as we like it Dark, this is a dark, dark whiskey. Are they getting better, these batches? I think they're getting better. I think there's enough complexity going through. They're all slightly different from each other, so there's a little bit going on. So th this one in particular is batch six. It's, it's intense, it's powerful, it's full of flavour. It's dark, it's dark everything. Dark fruit, plums, raisins, figs, dark cherries, black grape, black currant juice. All of that's going on here, it's thick, it's oily, it's creamy. It's loads and loads of dark chocolate. It's it's a hint of spice in there as well, but it has those usual Glenallachy characteristics of the honey. It's got a lovely, lovely honey character going through here as well. So it's a little bit sweet, but at the same time it's dark. Heading into the finish, it becomes really, really dark chocolate. Lots of coffee. Those raisins become really prominent, so it becomes very, very dark in the finish. It's fantastic. Again, 57.8 cast strength. Takes water well. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. So that's the last of the sherry, guys. Let's let's move on. I'm heading towards the spring bank of Space Side. This is a distillery that I've called this many times and I'm loving everything that comes from it. I've been drinking it right from the very beginning. From the Ben Romack 10 right through. I've tried just about everything that Ben Romack has to put out. This is the cast strength Ben Romack. This is batch one. This was distilled in 2009. This is a backup bottle. I'm just about finishing my bottle, but I've left it indoors and we've got to bring it out. So yeah, you probably notice it's in the old bottles. This is what the new bottles look like. Juries out there. Do you prefer the bottles? Do you not like the bottles? Do you prefer the old bottles or the new bottles, guys? Dive in the comments. Let me know. Yeah, everything at this distillery, folks, is first fill. So it's first fill bourbon or it's first fill sherry. This one is in case it's a case of both first fill bourbon and first fill sherry. Uh, I'm not too sure of what the what the balance is of both of them, but it's a beautiful. This whiskey is as I say, I've been doing it from the very beginning. Everything's fantastic. It is um, rich, powerful, intense. Packs a punch at 58.8% ABV, so it really, really takes water well. Uh, it's such a small distillery owned by Gordon McPhail. Tip my hat to Gordon McPhail for everything they're doing there, particularly the first fill bourbon and first fill. So everything's first fill, which is fantastic. So the, on this one, there's there's a bit of both. There's got some sherry notes. I've got some raisins and figs and dark fruit and red fruit and all that kind of stuff. But it's beautifully balanced out with the bourbon casks influences. So you've got your vanillas, your honeys, your toffees, your, your creme brulees, your your custard, all, all that kind of stuff. So those, those notes are there. Berry fruits mixed with it, beautifully integrated. But at the same time, it has that little smoke blanket all around it. There's a little bit of smoke on the nose. Once you get into the palate and into the finish, there's a nice little smoky finish. It's okay, but it's wonderful, wonderfully, beautifully put together. And it's a fantastic piece of work from the guys at Ben Romack. So I tip my hat. Let's move on. As we've just done the Springbank on Speyside with a Ben Romack, I thought, why not? Let's head to Springbank itself. 
I'll pull one of these spring banks off here because I've got a few on the go at the minute. This is a wee bit different. This is the spring bank 12 cash strength, 55.9% ABV. This is 100% ex bourbon cask. Yes, I hear you say there's no sherry involved in this one. So yeah, we haven't got any. The reason I've not done this one is because there's a wee bit of sherry in here. But this is all ex bourbon cask. So this one is all sweet. It's vanilla, it's toffee, it's honey. But at the same time, it has that Campbelltown effect. It's, it's salty, it's sea salt, a little, little bit of marine going on in there. But it's very, very citrusy. It's orange and grapefruit on the nose. It's, it's, it's sweet. It's got a really, really nice sweet confectionery note going on. There's a little bit of bonfire smoke in the distance. It's got a little backbone of bonfire smoke way, way back. Those confectionery notes, those kind of pineapple cubes. We have a little sweet here, a little candy sweet because it's pineapple cubes. We do some cola ones, but this is definitely pineapple. There's some salty caramel going on here as well. As you get into the palate, it's powerful, it's intense, it's a cast strength whiskey. See, it's 55.9 and it's hot on arrival, it's peppery, but it settles down. It's, it's even got a little bit of chilli going on. Um, but yeah, it's, it, on the, the mouth feels wonderful, it's silky, it's velvety. It's a wonderful, wonderful mouthfeel on this one, but it's it's spicy. There's a little bit of bitterness coming from the grapefruit. There's a little grapefruit in there, but it's a lot of lemon citrus, orange citrus. There's a, there's a chocolate going on in there as well. The spice, the cinnamon, the ginger. But with the chocolate, it's, the chocolate is like a... It's like a centre, it's like a sweet centred chocolate. It's got orange in the centre of the chocolate. It's got strawberry in the centre of the chocolate. So it's wonderful, wonderful stuff, and it's fantastic. It's Springbank 12. Yes, they're a wee bit tougher to get a hold of, but if you manage to pick one of these up, fill your boots. Let's move on. I'm going to stay on Campbelltown for the next couple, guys. I'm sticking this time. I'm heading to... I'm going to reach over here, and I'm going to go heavily peated. Yes, you heard me, heavily peated. Kilcarran heavily peated, this is batch 6, so this is 57.4, peat in progress, not work in progress, this is peat in progress guys, I have been through and I've, I've reviewed lots of these, I've done all the batches, I think. I'm pretty sure I've done all of them on review, I'm loving them all, but this is 57.4, this one is 75% ex bourbon cask again, yes there's 25% ex sherry cask in here again. But yeah, no, this is wonderful, wonderful stuff. Heavily peated. I, I've not quite grasped what heavily peated means because I was I was expecting it to be much more sooty, much more peated, much more pungent. But this is certainly not. This is this is wonderful, wonderful stuff. This is sooty. It's got that little bit of smoke in there and, and the nose. That bonfire, that distant bonfire smoke. It's full of sea air. It's full of sea salt. It's full of coastal has a beautiful savoury note, it's like a steak bake, toasty, buttered toast, creamy, creamy, hot, buttered, creamy toast, it's got that dusty old books element as well, this is a wee bit more dustier than the other ones, that's what I've realised with these, four, I think three, four and five are much fresher and fruitier and brighter, there's not a lot of fruit in this one guys, it's all about the, the smoke, the coastal, the earthiness, there's those dusty old books on the nose, those leathery old, old leather notes. But once you get into the palate, it's, it's full of toffee and caramel and salted caramel. It's dry and sooty on arrival. It's very, very spicy. It's got a spicy arrival. It's beautifully balanced between the smoke and the spice and the coastal. Uh, it's earthy. It's wet stone. It's a lot of outdoor elements. But at the same time, that spicy ginger, peppery notes are there all the way through. And it's a wonderful, wonderful, savoury sweetness. So super, super stuff. This is 40 to 50 pounds, guys, if you could pick that up. And they're a wee bit easier to pick up than most of the Kilcarens. I think there's, I've st I could still pick one of these up today if I wanted. Uh, but absolutely fantastic. Kilcarren heavily peated, batch six. Okay, just keeping it on a little bit longer on Campbelltown, folks. I'm going to stick with Kilcarren. I've got to reach back in here again and I'm going to reach down here. I'm going to try and cover three cast strength bottles in one go. 
So let's pull that one out. So that's the Kill Care and Eat port cask finish. That's the Kill Care and Eat bourbon cask finish. And reaching down here, I've got the Kill Care and Eat sherry cask finish. So, wow, three fantastic cast strength whiskies. Loving them all. I've had them all. I've tried them all. I've bought them all. I've loved them all. Um, yes, they're getting a wee bit tougher to get a hold of, guys. But if you've got your wits about you, then you should be able to pick them up. Gradually, I think there's more and more bottles coming available. It might mean you're organising trips to the distillery to try and pick them up. That would be one way of doing it. Or you've got people who can ship them around, mull them around. There's little mull around for you. Guys, you can mull around for you. All of that stuff going on. Every way you can try and get hold of one of these bottles. It's fantastic. I have reviewed them all in the past. I see I've got this one. I've just recently picked up the sherry cask for the first time. I didn't have the FOMO. I didn't go chasing it. But I gave in in the end and I tracked one down. The port cask, I got uh, worked something out with Ed Kildee up there in Glasgow. And the Malt Monk sorted me out with the uh, bourbon cask. So I'm doing okay. So these people around, these friends of the community, dive all over them. Find out if they're helping you getting some bottles. And that's what I did with that. But all very, very different. If you like your bourbon casks, then you're going to love the Kilcairn and 8 bourbon. Probably prefer it to the sherry casks, but if you're a sherry lover, then you're all over it. The port for me is a wee bit different. It's the first time I think they've done a port one. Loved it for me, probably at the minute. It's probably the one I'm enjoying the most is the port. Uh, I've not died really got into the sherry one yet because I've had a few samples of it in the past. I tried both of them at the Glasgow Whiskey Festival, but I'm loving this this bourbon one as well. Lots of vanillas, toffees, honeys, coastal saltiness. Just beautiful, beautiful Kilkenn in this, and it's the same with all of them. But if you want to go back and see them in more detail, guys, I'll try and put links above. But three fantastic cast strength whiskies, all from Kilkenn. So let's move on. Okay, folks, two left. Not the two, the best two. I've, I've not done these in any particular order. Uh, guys, if dive into the comments if you've liked any of these whiskies, if you've got them on your bar, tell us all about them. If you've not got them on your bar, please tell me why you've not got them on your bar. Uh, dive in, love to hear your comments, love to engage and let's dive into these last two. So I'm heading back to Campbelltown folks and it wouldn't be a cast strength whiskey friend video without a Victoriana on it. So it's the Glen Scotia Victoriana 54.2% ABV. Yes it's non-age statement, natural colour, non-chill filtered, all of that jazz. This is, in my opinion, and it's only my opinion, probably the best non-age statement whiskey on the market. Uh, for the money, for the quality, it's absolutely fantastic. It's, it is a mix of first and second fill um, ex-bourbon. It has a 12-month finishing period in PX and American oak casks. This, for me, is a wee bit of chameleon whiskey, because every time I do it, it's a wee bit different. It, it's lovely, it's salty, it's Campbelltown, it's it's it, it's it's medicinal, it's 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 so much going on folks. It's got spiced oak, it's got furniture polish on the nose, it's savoury, it's coastal, it's briny, it's it's got all of that, that sea air, that sea breeze. That's just the start, then it's got that sweet shop confectory, you know, boiled sweets, maybe some strawberry cubes cola cubes, all of that kind of stuff. Um, again, once you get into the palate, it's, it's got that smoky element, that little hint of smoke in there. It's berry fruit, it's strawberry, those boiled sweets are there again. The medicinal notes, the vanilla, the toffee, the honey, the sticky honey. It's roasted salted caramel. It's so much, and every time you pour a dram, folks, it will be different. It's complex, it's incredible stuff. If you've not got this in your bar, guys, please dive into the comments and please let me know why it's not in your bar. Um, wonderful, wonderful stuff. Tip my hat again to Glen Scotia. It's probably the best Glen Scotia I've tasted for many, many, many years. But absolutely wonderful. Fantastic. Let's move on to the last one. Well, here we go, folks. We're on to the last one now. By no means the last, no means the worst. This is just another, another beautiful one on the list. This time we're heading back to the Highlands, guys. We're heading to Edradour. Edradour Distillery. This is the Abisco Decanter. Absolutely fantastic. 12-year-old cast strength. 
For all the geeks, it's distilled 161006, bottled 290519, cast number 346, and there's 685 bottles. This one's coming in at a whopping 57.3% ABV. Absolutely wonderful. If you want all that, Edredur for me is known as that dirty, dirty whiskey. That uh, diesel and petrol and uh, industrial and it's warehouses. It's it's definitely loads and loads of Dunnage stuff going on there at Edredur. But that for me is that as soon as you can kind of nose and taste it, you, you, I think you're pretty much well on. You'll know it's... It's heading down the Edradale route. This is by no means, this is a challenging whiskey. This is a whiskey for not for the faint-hearted. This is for the big whiskey drinker. This is the, the pinnacle that we all strive to get to, is to get to one of these Edradales. These big, big, punchy, powerful, industrial, sweet and powerful, awesome whiskey. This one is really, really dark, dark fruit. Plums, raisins, figs, fruitcake, all the usual sherry notes that you'd find. And amongst it, you've got that, that the nose is, is a different type of nose. It's not the, the, the nicest nose in the world. It's industrial, it's petrol, it's diesel, it's mechanics overalls, it's wet stone, it's wet dog. It's all of that stuff going on. But once you get to the palate, it's phenomenal stuff. The finish is incredible. It's fruity, it's it's gutsy, it's powerful, it takes water really well. Yes, it's pricey, is about £110, £115 a bottle. But for that quality of whiskey, this is where everyone's whiskey journey should take them to. If you're, if you're following and progressing as you go through, particularly if you like and sherry whiskies, this is your one to be on. But other than that, guys, that's the, the list. I've probably covered 12, 13, 14. I'm not sure how many I've done. You're probably wondering what I've got in my glass. I'm sitting here with a beautiful Kilcarran port. It's been opening up wonderfully. Oh, that berry fruit, that, that Campbelltown funk. Real, real nice. Red fruit, berry fruit, plums, raisins. That, that port cask influence is really, really, really fruity on the palate. Funky, spicy, powerful, intense. Real, real great stuff, man. Guys, if you've liked the video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below, folks. Yes, it's that big red thing. Just a friendly reminder from me to me, it still doesn't cost you anything. It's still completely free. And you're still helping your channel massively on the way to the magical 6K. Don't forget to click the bell to be kept up to date with future videos and live streams. Just a quick one, the, the four year anniversary live streams, the next one coming up soon guys, that's probably going to be sometime next month. Coins, glasses, Patreon, I'll drop all the links in the description, you want to chase up there, you want to help support the channel, you want to increase your coins, upgrade your coins, keep your collection going, some whiskey friend glasses, it's all going on down there in the description guys. Just dive in, I'm Alan, I'm the whiskey friend, until the next time. Don't forget to send some good whiskey down the hatch. And as always, pleasure in the sharing. See you in the next one. Cheers now.